Today, we're going to be going over just the tip of the Rust Iceberg. This part of the Rust Iceberg contains everything from invisibility armor to rat animals to a certain someone who can't be named because this video would get demonetized. I will name them later though, so don't worry. Now, what this is, is this is a Rust Iceberg that was posted on our Play Rust or the subreddit Play Rust. This iceberg was posted by It's Redness, so full credit to them for posting this. I'm just going into what each of these things is. I wanted to do this a while ago. I found it extremely interesting, so I finally decided to sit down, do some research, and get this video out there. There's going to be four parts of this iceberg, so if you like part one, there's probably a lot more obscure references in part two, three, and four, so make sure you hit subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing on this iceberg is the old armor models. What this refers to is the old armor system that existed in Legacy Rust. This armor had four different pieces. So you had the helmet, you had sort of a chest or body piece, you had legs, and then you had boots. There were various types of armor with one of them being only admin exclusive. So what you had is you could have a cloth armor, after that, you could have leather armor. After that, you had Kevlar armor. And finally, to round things off as a player, you had rad suit armor. So the rad suit was basically provide you with radiation protection. Otherwise, Kevlar would be the highest and cloth would be the weakest. And finally, the one that everybody's probably interested in is you had invisibility armor. So this gave you 50 protection in everything and it also made you invisible. Yeah, if you somehow managed to obtain this armor, you were basically an unstoppable god. Next up on the iceberg, we've got railways. Now, railways have been added to the game. They do exist. I think that's pretty obvious. If you're even a complete beginner, you've probably stumbled across them. The reason I think this was added to the iceberg is that was an idea that was floated way back in the day, and it took the devs quite a while to implement them, so it was something that the creator of this iceberg thought would never be implemented and therefore would be something worthwhile putting on this iceberg. Anyways, railways have been implemented. There's trains in the game now, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, that's what that is on the iceberg. Iceberg. Next up, we've got Hapis slash Savas removal. So what these are is these were maps that a small audience of players really enjoyed. They used to be official maps and they still are official maps now, but at one point they were removed. It took a couple of years, but those maps have come back. But yeah, those were just maps that were not procedurally generated that players really liked. The devs didn't have time to work with them, so they'd remove those maps for the time being and now they're back. Next up, we've got Rust Legacy, and this just refers to the old version of Rust. So when Rust first released in 2013, that would be the Rust Legacy version. It's way different from the game you know and love now, but it's interesting to look back on some of that gameplay if you've got the time. Next up on the iceberg, we've got food decay. So back in the day, it actually used to be possible for your food to go bad. This would happen if you had food for too long or if the food was stored improperly. If you're ever wondering why refrigerators were added to rust, this is why. That system is no longer in place, but yeah, back in the day, you used to have things like spoiled chicken, rotten apples, and a whole host of other food that had gone bad. If the player was desperate, they could consume this meat, but there was always a chance that that player would be poisoned because the food had just gone bad. And up next, you've got birds. I'm not sure if anybody knows this, but if you hit a tree, sometimes birds come out of it. That's a thing that exists in the game right now. Maybe this is referring to birds that existed way back in the day, but yeah, birds are in the game right now. I don't even think this should have made the iceberg, but it did. So yeah, birds. And next up, you've got harpoons. Now, a lot of people are probably thinking I'm referring to a spear gun, but I'm not. Back in 2015, I believe, there was actually a concept for a salvaged harpoon gun. This was something that was eventually scrapped, but yeah, back in the day, they were going to introduce a harpoon gun that I think was supposed to be a counter for armor. So basically, a harpoon gun was like a one-shot gun that could go right through your armor. It actually sounds like a pretty good idea. I'm curious why they scrapped it. Next up, you've got Blueprint Fragments, and this is an interesting one. So this was the old Rust Blueprint system. So the way this worked is you could use Blueprint Fragments to either construct a random blueprint, this would be a tier one blueprint, I guess, or to make a blueprint page. Using blueprint pages, you could either reveal an uncommon blueprint, this would be tier two blueprints, if, or you could collect five blueprint pages and create a blueprint book. With the blueprint book, what you can do is you can either reveal a basically a tier three blueprint or you can create a blueprint library using four blueprint books. Then using a blueprint library, you can get a very rare blueprint or basically what would be considered a tier four blueprint. Now, I know there's only three tiers of blueprints in the game right now, but 
There used to be four tiers, and those were all based on blueprint fragments. Not sure if this system was better or worse. Actually, I guarantee you this system was worse than the current system. Moving on, we've got a lighter night. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. The nights used to be a lot brighter. If you're wondering at all what this used to look like, feel free to go check out some console rust gameplay. That's pretty similar to what lighter nights used to be like in the PC edition of Rust. Next up on the iceberg, you've got ocean wildlife. When this iceberg was created, nothing really existed in the ocean. I think fishing was still just a concept. Since then, fishing's been added. You've got sharks and everything like that. But yeah, basically way before all of that, about five years ago or in 2019, there was talk of ocean wildlife and what people thought would be added would be turtles, dolphins, whales, and even fish. You could use spears and primitive weapons underwater to try and kill those animals, and those animals could fight back in some cases. Obviously, some of that has been added to the game, but not all of that, and this is what that iceberg was referring to. Next up, we've got zombies. So you've got to be really old school to remember this, but basically way back in the day when Rust Legacy existed, zombies were a thing. Those of you who are younger might not remember this, but way back in the day when Rust originally released, zombies were a huge thing. You had massive TV shows like The Walking Dead, which the first couple seasons are amazing. You had a bunch of games like DayZ, and zombies were just everywhere in the zeitgeist. Yeah, pretty much any game that could incorporate zombies did incorporate zombies, one of those games being Rust. Then as people sort of got tired of zombies, it sort of died down a little bit, the hype died down, and at that point, the Rust developers decided to remove zombies because they didn't want the game to feel like just another zombie survival game or basically a DayZ clone. The removal of zombies was done in February of 2014, at which point they were replaced by irradiation animals. And for those of you wondering what they are, fear not, because those are actually included in this part of the iceberg too. But for now, we're going to be moving on to buzzards. This one was actually really hard to find information on, but it seems like back in the day, there was an idea that buzzards could be added to the game, with their primary feature being that they'd fly over dead bodies, meaning that if you were in the area, looked up and saw some buzzards, you knew there was a dead body about and possibly some good loot. Next up, we've got arrow types. This one, I don't know why it was included in the iceberg. Maybe they're referring to the fact that there's different types of arrows in the game Rust, and a lot of people who are very new to the game might not know that. Or maybe they're referring to an idea that I remember, which was explosive arrows. Not sure if the devs ever really gave this any consideration, but there was a lot of talk about making an arrow type, which was basically a bunch of bean cans tied around an arrow. It could be shot at doors and used as a raiding weapon, or possibly just to disarm turrets or unlucky players. But yeah, not 100% sure what arrow types is talking about but that could be one possibility there's been a lot of different arrow types suggested so who knows and next up on the rust iceberg would be handcuffs so this is an idea that came about in 2015 and the devs said that they'd implement it but then they never did end up implementing it there were some animations created by the devs there was some work done on it but yeah the concept was that handcuffs would be added to the game and if you put handcuffs on a player that player would not be able to kill themselves in order to respawn really like the concept behind this i think that would be a cool thing to add to the game but the amount of griefing that could be done using it is simply astronomical like i can imagine that there are like, there are probably companies that would sponsor just based on the amount of keyboards and mouses that would be broken as people raged because they'd been handcuffed. It, it, it would be bad, it would be hilarious, and it would probably ruin the game. So it's probably a good decision not to add handcuffs to the game, but it's a cool idea. And now we've got a part of the iceberg that Rust console players are intimately familiar with, and that would be PP. Not theirs, because they're probably too busy playing Rust, but PP9000. PP9000 is a bot or a username that was blamed for all deaths that happened that couldn't really be put on anyone or anything. It was a default name that would just end up there, and if you look through forums, posts, reddits, everything like that, you're going to find a hilarious amount of people blaming PP9000 for hacking or cheating or aimbotting or viewbotting or getting into their base, not destroying any doors and somehow still managing to kill them. Yeah. That would be PP9000, which is otherwise known as an unnamed factor. Usually, usually it's due to a server restart or a bug that causes weather to kill you but not registers what killed you. And after that hilarious one, we've got high-grade fuel. So you're probably all familiar with low-grade fuel. It can be used to power a variety of minicopters, vehicles, and everything like that. The idea would be that high-grade fuel would be added to power some of the more advanced vehicles in the game. It would basically be a low-grade fuel but more efficient. Nothing too exciting there. 
But next up, we do have an exciting one, and this would be rad animals. See, the idea behind rad animals introduces a few other things that we've got to dive into, but basically, these would be mutated bears or mutated wolves, and they would appear red in color. Rad animals would be found outside of rad towns. Now, you're probably wondering, what are rad towns? Rad towns would basically be monuments with radiation. From what I can gather, rad towns are basically the first iteration of monuments. And yeah, outside of rad towns, you'd find rad animals. And those animals would typically travel in packs. Coming into the last two on this part of the iceberg, we've got coconuts, which would be food that would basically just fall from trees. You know, coconuts, nothing really too advanced to that and tier two cooking. So the idea behind tier two cooking was you got your tier one cooking, which would be your basic meats, your apples or everything like that. I don't know if picking up an apple's cooking, but basically tier one cooking would be your meats. Tier two cooking, however, would be more advanced things like an apple pie, for instance. One of the cool things behind tier two cooking is it could actually give you buffs that would make your character just perform better because they ate something tastier. And yeah, that is tier one of the Rust Iceberg. If you're interested in going a bit more down the shaft into tier two and tier three, and then fully covering that underside in tier four, make sure you hit subscribe because there's a lot more to this iceberg and it definitely gets a lot more interesting than this.